Hello, reading friend. Yeah, you. Thanks for clicking on this video and checking out my 2021 reading year wrap up. I'd love to hear about yours, how your reading year went. So drop me a comment down below and let me know some of the details. But here's my list of the 38 books that I managed to get read in 2021. And they are, as per my usual, sort of all over the place as far as genres and types of books, fiction and nonfiction. Uh, I did chat. Each of these have their own individual chat, and I will link to those chats down in the details below in case you see something over here that you might have missed throughout the year that catches your interest. I'm going to chat about these in a, in a couple of different ways, divided up by genre and then also by publication year, which is just sort of the way that I like to uh, take a look at what I'm reading and how I'm reading it. So um, I'm going to do it that way. So uh, let's just get into it. So here's the 10 nonfiction books that I read in 2021. I kicked off my nonfiction reads with uh, Galileo's Error, Foundations for a New Science of Consciousness by Philip Goff. This was a sort of a study of, um, uh, well, really where the science of consciousness is right now, sort of a uh, look at that, and how that the study of consciousness um, took a wrong turn in the past, like in, during the Enlightenment. So this was really interesting. Then I read The Third Reich in Power, 1933 to 1939 by Richard J. Evans. This book uh, is second in a three-volume history of The Third Reich. I read the first volume a few years ago. I will link to that chat down below as well. Um, but I wanted to finish out these three volumes. Unfortunately, I did just get the second volume read. I do hope to get the third and final volume of The Third Reich History read next year. Then I read History in English Words by Owen Barfield. This it takes a look at language, the English language, and how it's changed over time, and how we look at how the me how words, the meaning of words, uh, what they want, how, how words were defined in a different way in the past reflects the past. And so that was really interesting. Then I read The Phenomenon of Man by Pierre Teilhard de Chardin. This is a philo work of philosophy, uh, taking a look again at human consciousness, really like what makes humans human and so that was really really interesting then I picked up Ravenna Crucible of Europe by Judith Perrin this is a history of the city of Ravenna in Italy from the late Roman Empire until about the 800s I think until around the crowning of Charlemagne so that sort of period of time um, the decline the ending of the Roman Empire and the rise of the Byzant Byzantine Empire uh, it sort of takes place during this period and it's really interesting then I read The Proper Study of Mankind by Isaiah Berlin. This was a collection of essays uh, by Isaiah Berlin. And again, uh, really covers a really wide range of, of, of just sort of humanist type topics. Then I checked out the, care, the Caretakers of the Cosmos Living Responsibly in an Unfinished World by Gary Lockman. I've been slowly, you know, reading about one book by Gary Lockman a year, and I do have one planned uh, for next year by him. Um, I'm going to read about Hermes Trismegistus, his book on Hermes Trismegistus uh, next year. But this one was all about like how our consciousness really creates reality, creates our reality. So I found that fascinating. Then I read Shakespeare in a Divided America, what his plays tell us about our past and future by James Shapiro. This was about uh, Shakespeare and how the play, how the plays are staged in the United States over the over our, the course of our history, really reflects the culture. And that was really just I enjoyed this book more than I was expecting. To um, really interesting look at that. Then I read The Future of Nutrition by T. Colin Campbell. T. Colin Campbell is an academic nutrition. Um, scientist and has worked in sort of the highest levels of government and institutions throughout his long career. And so this was really interesting about the misinformation that's out there about nutri around nutrition and how really our institutions have failed the public as far as providing good nutrition, nutritional um, edu education for the general public. So that was fascinating. Finally, I wrapped up my nonfiction reading year by reading Kindred, Neanderthal, Life, Love, Death, and Art by Rebecca Rag Sykes. And I'm still in the process of, 
of reading this. I should have this finished though before the end of the year. So I'm counting it for my 2021 reads because I'm pretty far along in it already. This is all about our relatives, our near relatives, the Neanderthal species. Um, and the latest science around that has changed a lot over the last say like 50 years for sure. Uh, so we know a lot more about the Neanderthals than we once did. And there's a lot of, still a lot of those old myths that are incorrect out there in the general public. So this book was written for the general public and I'm finding it really fascinating. So that's my 10 nonfiction reads for 2021. A few, a bit fewer nonfiction reads than I normally have in a given year, but nevertheless, I feel like these were some pretty good selections. So I read 10 works of nonfiction. That means I read 28 works of fiction. So to review these, I'm going to uh, divide them up by genre. Now the genres that I'm using here are just the ones that I use to record the books in my sort of my system of record keeping about what I read. So it's arguable that they could fit into subgenres or some other genre. So these are just the very general genres that I use um, here. So I, I realized that many of these works could be considered some other genre uh, officially. Okay, but let's start out with literary. So by literary, I, I read the most of, of any given category, nine books that I consider, I consider literary. So I kicked off my literary reading year with Norwegian Wood by Hiroki Murakami. You know, I'm slowly making my way through all the Murakami books. And so Norwegian Wood is one of his uh, more, more well-known and I had never read it. So I'm so glad to finally get this read in 2021. Then I read Beneath the Wheel by Herman Hesse. Herman Hesse is a another author that I am working my way through their works. I do have uh, Gertrude on my reading list for 2022, so there will be some more Herman Hesse coming up. There will also be some more Haruki Murakami coming up next year. I've got, um, I think I've got Sputnik Sweetheart coming up next year planned, and maybe even uh, Killing Commendatory. I'm not sure, but at least one Murakami as well in 2022. Anyway, then I went, uh, then I read uh, Of Human Bondage by W. Somerset Mom. I had read The Razor's Edge by him a couple of years ago, and I wanted to get another mom read. Um, I ended up reading two Somerset Moms, actually, this year in 2021. Uh, I'll get to the other one here later. Um, but then I went, to, I read uh, Little Dorrit by Charles Dickens, one of my favorite uh, novels by Charles Dickens, and I had, a re this was a reread for me, but I wanted to read it again so I could do a proper chat for it on my channel because I had never chatted it here, so um, I enjoyed that again, of course. Love that book. Then I read To the Lighthouse by Virginia Woolf. I enjoyed this more than I expected. Very dreamy. Um, just, uh, you know, I had read a few years ago, I had read Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf, so I did want to get this read in 2021, so finally got that read. Then I read my second of the Murakami novels for 2021. I read reread 1Q84. I had read this before, but I decided I wanted to read this again and do a proper chat for it on my channel because I had not chatted it on my channel yet. So I got that reread. Um, then I read another Dickens, The Pickwick Papers by Charles Dickens. This is actually the um, the oldest book I read actually in 2021. Published in 1837. I'll talk more about that here in a bit. Um, then I read The Magic Mountain by Thomas Mann. This one took me a while to get through because it's 800 and almost 900 pages long. But um, I had read a couple of other works by Thomas Mann over the last couple of years. So I did want to get, I'd been meaning to get to The Magic Mountain for a while. So, so glad to have gotten that done. And then finally wrapped up my literary reading year with The Painted Veil. I have not chatted this one yet because I just, I'm almost finished with it. Uh, but I will finish it before the end of the year. That wraps up literary. Okay, so now let's jump into some science fiction. Science fiction, I read six books of science fiction in 2021. I actually kicked off the year by uh, reading God Emperor of Dune by Frank Herbert. I had, at the end of 2020, I had started reading the Dune series. I had read some of that series before, but I had never finished it up. So I wanted to finish it up in 2021. So I picked it up uh, at the beginning of the year where I left off in 2020 with God Emperor of Dune by Frank Herbert. Then I read Heretics of Dune, this book number five in the six books of the Frank Herbert Dune series, and then followed that with the sixth of the books, Chapter House Dune, 
wrapping up the Frank Herbert uh, series of Dune, the Frank Herbert written series of Dune. There are some more books in the Dune universe, but not written by Frank Herbert himself. Then I read The Inhabited Island by Boris and Arkady Strugatsky. This is Russian era, Soviet era Russian science fiction, and I've been slowly working my way through their, their works as they've been retranslated into English with updated translations. And so uh, I got one of theirs read, and I do have a book of theirs planned for 2022. Uh, I think it's called The Ugly Swan. Um, can't remember now exactly, but I've got a, I've got more of them coming up next uh, next year, 2022. Then I decided to reread Foundation by Isaac Asimov. I read this um, many years ago, uh, so I wanted to reread that and maybe re re, re uh, revisit this series. And then so I read the second one. Then later, Foundation and Empire by Isaac Asimov, and I do plan in 2022, there are seven books total in the Foundation series by Asimov, and I do plan to work my way through at least a couple or a few more of these books in 2022 in, that are in this series. Okay, so fantasy. Six books also in fantasy in 2021. I kicked off my fantasy reads in 2021 with the Midnight Library, by Matt Haig. This book was, um, it just sounded so fascinating to me. I think it was a bestseller, uh, but I did enjoy it a lot. Um, then I checked out The Way They Fail by Joshua B. Coleman. This um, book um, was really interesting to me because it's all about a community and how people respond to a crisis in community and in a set in a fantasy type setting. So um, there is a second one of this series. There's a second a second book uh, in this same world, and I do have that on my reading list for 2022. I can't think of what the title of it is right now, though. But more of this story will be coming up in 2022. Then I read The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by B. E. Schwab. So this was really interesting too about this girl that uh, that no one can ever remember her. This woman, uh, people forget her the minute she walks away, and she's um, immortal basically. So she's doomed to this sort of existence. Um, very interesting, very immersive sort of world to get into. Then I read Till by Daniel Kelman. So this is one of those books, I, I classified it as fantasy, but it could actually be historical fiction as well, because it had a kind of fairy tale quality. It takes place in the 30 years war in Europe, in Central Europe, and um, it's all about a sort of a jester that goes from town to town. Um, and it's almost supernatural, has cer certain su supernatural type elements in it, although we, the reader, know that it's not really supernatural, but it seems that way. It seems very magical. So um, I enjoyed that a lot. Then I read some theological fantasy, War in Heaven by Charles Williams. I had read... Um, uh, the Descendant to Hell by Williams a couple of years ago, so I wanted to read something else by him. And I don't ha currently have anything by him on my radar for next year, but I think I'm going to look up some, look maybe tr maybe put one of of um, another one of his works on sort of like maybe a standby list for next year because he did, he did, he approaches fantasy from sort of this theological spiritual uh, side, sort of a Christianity kind of Christian maybe fantasy. So it's it's really interesting the way he the way he. Um, immerses us into a story. War in Heaven was a grail story, was a holy grail story. Then I wrapped up my fantasy uh, year with The Eye of the World by Robert Jordan. This is book one of the Wheel of Time series. Yes, I got turned onto this by the Amazon series, and one of my co-workers was reading this book, and I, so I decided, well, let me give that a shot because I was enjoying, I did enjoy the, uh, the, the series. Um, so I jumped into the, the first book and just loved it. So yes, I do hope to get at least six of the um, World of Time, the Wheel of Time um, books read next year in 2022. I think there's something like 14 books in total, so I don't think I'll get through the whole series next year, but maybe I can get through another like five or six of them next year. And that'll wrap up, that wraps up my fantasy reads for 2021. Okay, the next category I have is mystery. 
particularly locked room mysteries. So I had, last year I had, or 2020, I had watched this, one of the great courses about mystery writing, writers and mystery, the genre of mysteries. And so I learned about locked room mysteries and I had never read any. So I decided to read these two classic locked room mysteries. I actually had a third one on my list that I didn't get to in 2021. Uh, the Hollow Man, but I do hope to get to that in 2022. But anyway, for Locked Room Mysteries, I did get to the Big Bow Mystery by Israel Zangwell. I think this is considered the first Locked Room Mystery, uh, first sort of clear Locked Room Mystery. And then the Mystery of the Yellow Room um, by Gaston LaRue, which is another early uh, Locked Room Mystery, considered one of the classics of the genre. So these was, this was my first exposure to Locked Room Mysteries, and I had a lot of fun with these. Okay, so here's my hard boiled, what I'm calling hard boiled or noir fiction that I enjoyed in 2021. I read three books in this genre, kicking it off with Farewell My Lovely by Raymond Chandler. I had read a couple of his other books, um, and so I wanted to get a Raymond Chandler book read in 2021, and I chose this one and was not disappointed. Then I read Double Indemnity by James M. Cain. I had read Mildred Pierce back, I think, in 2020, and I wanted to read another one of Cain's novels, so I chose Double Indemnity. Um, for Raymond Chandler, I do have a read planned for next year, uh, for 2022, a Raymond Chandler, another Raymond Chandler uh, novel. I'm blanking on the title, but I do have one chosen. And for James M. Kane, I think I'm going to read The Postman Always Rings Twice next year. Then I read Laura by Vera Caspery. This is a, a famous noir film. It's based on this on this novel, so I really wanted to read the novel just to see what the differences were, would be. And as usual, there are some significant differences. So one noir sort of novel that I have planned to read for 2022 along those lines is Nightmare Alley, which was recently adapted into a noir by Guillermo del Toro. It had, was adapted earlier, like in the 1940s, but this is sort of a remake of that, and um, I saw that recently, and I really liked it, but I really that really made me want to read the, read the novel, which it's based now, so I will be getting to that in 2022. I do enjoy this genre a lot, and I don't read enough in it, so I really Need, you know, I need to just let go and read more probably of uh, hard-boiled noir fiction. So historical fiction. Um, I've only got one book here that I'm classifying as historical fiction, and that's arguable because it could be considered a mystery even. But The Name of the Rose by Umberto Eco, I'm classifying it as a historical fiction because there are some actual historical characters that appear in the book, and it's just got such a sense of place. It takes place in a medieval monastery. There is, it is a murder mystery, a multiple murder murder mystery, actually, um, in this medieval monastery. And, you know, it's the, the monk, one of the monks that's visiting there, and his able assistant needs to solve this mystery and it's it's just fascinating uh, but there's a lot of theology in there too so there's a lot of other elements that's why I decided to classify this as historical fiction so historical fiction for 2022 I do hope to get to Wolf Hall I had meant to read Wolf Hall um in 20 this year in 2021 but didn't get to it so that is on my list for next year as far as historical fiction goes Here's my alternate history. One book, one little lonely book, The Man in the High Castle by Philip K. Dick is an alternate history of what if the if the Nazis and the Japanese had won um, World War II, uh, what would what would life be like in the United States? And that's what this book uh, sort of uh, sort of takes a look at. It's got some science fiction elements to it as well, but I'm classifying it more as an alternate history. Um, just uh, fascinating. I kind of got turned on to this too by the, there's an Amazon series of this that I had watched a while back and had always wanted to read the book on which it's based and so finally got around to doing that and loved it. Okay, so now let's take a look at when these books were published. It might not be interesting to everybody, but it's interesting to me to be aware of 
when the books I'm reading were published. So if I'm reading a lot of books or mostly books published in the last couple of years or if I'm spreading it out and you know so I'm, I'm never really aware of this as I'm into my reading year and but every once in a while I'll take a pause and I will take sort of compile the the uh, do the math on it and just take a look so I was you know I was kind of surprised here I'll get into it a little bit more but just to kick this off my oldest and newest books read in 2021 the oldest was the Pickwick Papers published in 1837 and the newest was The Way They Fell by Joshua B. Coleman a work of fantasy published in 2021. It's not surprising to me, too surprising I guess, that I really only read one book that was published in 2021. In the year 2021, um, my, I, my reading usually does lag a bit, so I'm not usually a person that reads a lot of new releases right as they're released. I do occasionally, but it's usually not my not what I do. So let's just jump into it a bit with my 19th. Let's start out with the 19th century reads. So I read three books from the 19th century. The Big Bow Mystery by Israel, Z Israel Zangwell, published in 1892. Little Dorrit by Charles Dickens, published in 1857. The Pickwick Papers by Charles Dickens, uh, published in 1837, as I mentioned. So here's the books that I read from the 20th century. The 20th century turned out to be my most read century, <laughs> um, which I guess is not too surprising, I guess, because there's I had the whole century. The 21st century, we've only had a couple of decades into that so far, but I read 23 books uh, from the 20th century. Now I'm going to break this down by decade because I think it's kind of interesting to do. I think it's really interesting that uh, from 1892, from the 1890s all the way to the current year 2021, I read at least one book from every decade during that 100 and what 30 year period. So I thought that was real cool, but we're going to get into that a little bit more. Let's kick it off with the 1900s. I read two books from the 1900s, Beneath the Wheel by Herman Hesse, published in 1906, and The Mystery of the Yellow Room by Gaston LaRue, published in 1908. From the 1910s, I read one book of Human Bondage by W. Somerset Mom, published in 1915. Here's the 1920s. I read three books, To the Lighthouse by Virginia Woolf, published in 1927, The Magic Mountain by Thomas Mann, 1924, and The Painted Veil by W. Somerset Mom from 1925. The 1930s, I read one book, War in Heaven by Charles Williams, published in 1930. Now, I'm using the dating. I know 19, by, I think the strict strict interpretation of the calendar, 1930 is still technically in the 20s, but I use the more common uh, method of starting the decade off with the in, in, initial year, so 1930. All right, the 1940s, I read three books from the 1940s, Farewell, My Lovely by Raymond Chandler, 1940. Double Indemnity by James M. Cain, 1943, and Laura uh, by Vera Caspery, also in 1943. The 1950s, I read four books, History and English Words by Owen Barfield from 1953, The Phenomenon of Man by Pierre Teilhard de Chardin from 1955, and Foundation by Isaac Asimov from 1951, and Foundation and Empire by Asimov from 1952. The 1960s, I only read one book, The Man in the High Castle, from 1962. The 70s, I also only read one book, The Inhabited Island, by Boris and Arkady Strugatsky, originally published in 1971. The 1980s, I read five books, uh, God Emperor of Dune, um, by Frank Herbert, from 1985. Norwegian Wood by Hiroki Murakami from 1987, Heretics of Dune by Frank Herbert from 1984, Chapter House Dune by Frank Herbert from 1985, and then The Name of the Rose by Umberto Eco, which was from 1980. The 1990s, I read two books, The Proper Study of Mankind by Isaiah Berlin, a collection of essays published originally in 1997. The essays were published actually throughout the 20th century but the collection itself, 1997, the, and then the Wheel of Time series, book one, The Eye of the World by Robert Jordan, published in 1990. Then here's the books from the 21st century. I read 12 total books published in the 21st century, and the first decade of the 21st century, I read, I read two books in 2021, The Third Reich in Power, 
the second volume of the History of the Third Reich by Richard J. Evans, published in 2005, and 1Q84 by Hiroki Murakami, published in 2009. Then in the 2010s, I read three books, Galileo's Error, Foundations for a New Science of Consciousness by Philip Goff, published in 2019, Till by Daniel Kelman, published in 2017, and The Caretakers of the Cosmos, published uh, by Gary Lockman, published in 2013. Finally, in the current decade, the 2020s, I read seven books, The Midnight Library by Matt Haig from 2020, Ravenna, Crucible of Europe by Judith Perrin in 2020. Actually, all these books were from 2020, except for The Way They Fell by Joshua B. Coleman, which was published this year in 2021. The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab from 2020. Shakespeare in a Divided America by James Shapiro. The Future of Nutrition by T. Colin Campbell. And Kindred, Neanderthal, Life, Love, Death, and Art by Rebecca Rag Sykes, all from 2020. So, the most read authors uh, from 2021, you know, I'm such a reading generalist that I don't read a lot of uh, the same author very, very much. Um, the most read author in 2021 was Frank Herbert. I read three of his books. That was me finishing out that series, the Dune series. So, he came in as the most read author of 2021. And then I read two books each from Isaac Asimov, Charles Dickens, Haruki Murakami, and W. Somerset Mom. But I do plan to finish out the uh, Foundation series, so we'll be reading some more Isaac Asimov. I do have some more Charles Dickens on my list, as well as Haruki Murakami. And we'll see about Somerset Mom. I currently do not have a book on his of his on my 2022 reading list, but who knows? We shall see. So that wraps up my 2021 reading year. I hope your reading year was as good as mine was. I enjoyed it as usual. Obviously, I wouldn't keep doing this if I didn't enjoy it. And I'm looking forward to 2022. I've got some great books planned already, and I just can't wait to dive into it. So I will be seeing you all. Thank you again for joining me, for you know clicking on my videos and watching them, hit, hitting that like button, leaving the comments. You know that all means a lot to me, and I do appreciate it. And I do I do read every comment that that is made good or bad <laughs> so I'll leave this here with this and I will be seeing you all in the new year